I'm sure at some point in time your students have broken off a leaf on a milkweed plant or perhaps they have a rubber plant at home and its a leaf is broken off or a, some of the bark has been nicked as they walk by it or something like that and they've seen that white juice that comes out of it and wondered, wondered a little bit about it and what, what its properties and characteristics are. Well, that sap that comes out of some plants contains a natural polymer called latex. Rubber plants contain a great deal of it. Some other plants contain smaller amounts. The function of that natural polymer is that once it, the plant's protective outside coating is broken, the polymer comes out as the air reaches it. There's an evaporation process that takes place and that natural polymer bonds together and it forms a scab over top of that spot on the plant. Insects can't get in and attack the, the more tender part of the plant. Uh, people discovered fairly early on that you could gather that material and treat it with different materials and turn it into a natural rubber type compound. And in fact, the name rubber, I believe, dates back to old Joe Priestley, famous American chemist and sort of English as well, who uh, was using the product to rub out writing, and thus consequently the name rubber. And um, so we want to take a look at that. The first thing I'm going to do is I've got a container of latex here, and I'm going to just smell it briefly. And to my educated chemist's nose, I smell a little bit of ammonia in there. So there's kind of a basic odor to it, the ammonia odor, that I know fairly well. And so that kind of tells me that maybe latex has got some base, ammonia base in it. So it might be interesting to see what happens if I treat this with an acid. So I'm going to pour some latex into this beaker. And then I'm going to add a little natural acid, which would, in this case would be acetic acid or vinegar, and stir it around and see what happens. This will neutralize the base that's naturally in there. So I'll dump in a little, stir it around. There's something bizarre about working with latex, wearing latex gloves. But I'm going to reach down in here and squeeze it a little bit. I don't know if this is probably, yeah, you can see it. <laughs> Every once in a while some stuff comes splattering out of here. Now here's another thing I've discovered that I never had happen to me before because I've never done this with latex gloves on. The latex sticks to the latex gloves. <laughs> hey, this is kind of neat. This is an experiment. Ah, there we go. I think I got it. Mm. Let's go. All right. <laughs> I'm going to take this over to the sink briefly and rinse it off. And <laughs> I'm now going to take my latex gloves off because they are no longer necessary because I've got the acetic acid off of here and I'm going to get this out of the way. I have now a and it, considerably different looking material than that liquid that I pulled out before. I've neutralized the base. The latex that's in there has now had a chance to bond together to cross-link. One thing you will discover with this when you first make it and you start to squeeze it, not all of the latex necessarily has bonded because the some of it's inside and has been protected by that scab coating the same way plants are. And so if you squeeze it really hard, every once in a while a little bubble will come out and it'll shoot a nice squirt of latex out at you. Um, not enormously dangerous, but I can tell you that if it lands on your clothing and it solidifies, it will not come off. Uh, but this one, I think I've got it there now. Okay, so now what I have is a natural rubber product and the you can try to stretch it, and it won't. <laughs> or <laughs> it's okay. It's, it should. It's perfectly safe unless you've got a latex allergy. You can try to stretch it, and it's pretty solid. It will bounce, <laughs> not straight. 
but it does a nice job of bouncing. For a long time, this was the only rubber product that was available. In fact, um, in South America, where the rubber plants uh, originally were discovered, it was under penalty of death to take the plants out of the country. And they were originally smuggled out. Uh, an Englishman risked his life to steal them and carry them to, I believe, Malaysia, where they started building rubber plantations. Uh, so it, it, there's a long history behind latex and some really neat and interesting chemistry uh, and history. I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to go over the board for just a second. If you were to look at that latex solution in the bottle, if you could again become the incredibly shrinking chemistry student and see what was going on on the molecular level, you would see inside there that there are lots of strands of latex floating around. And so you could just kind of look at a bunch of long chain strands in there. The strands would be kept separated by that solution that's slightly basic, and that would keep them apart so they didn't stick together. Once you put in the acetic acid, the vinegar, it neutralizes the base that's in there that keeps the strands of latex apart. When that neutralization takes place, your water's generated, uh, some sodium acetate probably, or some other compound, because I have no real clue as to what all the chemicals are that are in there. But when that neutralization takes place, now these sticky strands that'll get together will in fact start to stick together. And they'll stick together and stick together. You saw what was happening in the beaker as I'm reaching down in there and all of a sudden everything is clumping into one big glob because of the, 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 all of the chains. They have bonds that hold them together and so it pops together in a nice strong uh, bond. And they're still a little bit flexible because you've got the long chains. So you can still stretch them a little bit but there's so much cross-linking, so much sticking, that the stretching is really difficult to do. What's kind of interesting with a ball when you bounce it with latex or any other rubber ball is that as this thing goes up and you let go of it, it comes down and hits a tabletop. It impacts the tabletop and pushes in. These, these strands of polymer have some memory associated with them. And so once you push them in, they remember where they were, they push back, and that's what lifts it back up off the table. It's the ball trying to get back into its shape that drives it back up off the table. I push it down, you compress those molecules along chains. Once they've been compressed a little bit, then they bounce back up and lift back up off the table. It, I think it's very interesting to show a natural polymer, latex, something that your students have seen before. Um, when they've broken open the side of a plant to talk a little bit about the, why plants emit that sort of juicy stuff. What's the point of that? Well, it's a polymer, and it acts like a Band-Aid. The plant is creating its own natural Band-Aid. If you collect the stuff, then, of course, you've got a polymer that you can use for a number of things. These are, you can keep these in your classroom. They'll last essentially forever. Um, they don't bounce straight. If you throw them out, they're going to bounce all over the place. But they're, they're perfectly safe once they've had a chance to, to sit and be rinsed off a couple of times. Uh, and the only thing you have concern with is there are some people that have latex allergies. And so you do have to be aware of that. <laughs>